Hello again, in this series we're looking at making a chess piece. The main goal was to practice our smooth and hard shading, but in this episode I'm going to talk about how we can texture to make it look realistic using the principled shader. This course is just one part of many courses that you can find on gabbit.co.uk, which is designed to take you from beginner right through to advanced levels, with new content being added regularly. So let's start with this. There's a couple of things you need for realistic shading. One, you need your object to react to objects around it and therefore be reflective. So we need to add a reflective material to this. The principled shade is great because it takes into account that every single object has some sort of reflective qualities. And chess pieces are quite shiny, so we want our chess piece to be shiny. So your object itself has to be reflective. You need light in the scene, but you also need a background to reflect. If you haven't got this file, you can download the link that's on my website. I'll also place a link in the description. Or you can just use a sphere, so add a UV sphere and it will do the same thing. So let's bring up our node editor. If I drag these three little lines up here across with my left mouse button, I get a new window. Let's press N and T to get rid of those panels and bring up the node editor. Let's press N again to get rid of that panel again. And let's zoom into our nodes. I'll start a new one, so I'll start a complete fresh. This is the one I did before. You can get rid of your material that's currently on there. It doesn't get rid of the material altogether, just that's on the object. So I press cross on that and start a new material. It always starts with the diffuse BSDF and you can click on that and press shift S to change it. If that doesn't work, then you'll have to press delete and add it. I'll do it the long way. So press delete, then shift A to add, or you can come down here to add. Shift A is the shortcut, shift A, shader, and then principled BSDF. And there it is, just make sure that's hooked up to the surface output. And as I mentioned before, this takes into account that every object is reflective in some way. It seems very complicated, but there's just two main aspects that we need to deal with for now. I'll go into others in later tutorials, but the base color is what color it is, and the roughness is how shiny it is. It's like the opposite of shininess is roughness. So the way we can see our effects in the viewport is if we press Shift Z, over the viewport, that's turning it to rendered mode down here. We were in solid mode, so Shift Z and Shift Z again will take you back to solid. So I'm in rendered mode at the moment, and let's change the color slightly. So let's change it to black, so it's a black chess piece. And it's quite rough at the moment, so I can turn the roughness down and it becomes glossy, and already that's looking like a nice chess piece. So base color and roughness. But it doesn't look quite realistic yet because we haven't got a background to reflect. In order to add a background, we go to our World tab just down the bottom here. It can also be found up here in your panel as well, the World tab. And there's this option, Use Nodes. Make sure that's clicked because that will use the nodes within Cycles. You may not have it because this may already appear for you and that's fine. So if I change the background color now, you should see the reflections change color as well. If I change it to blue, we get sort of more bluey colored reflections across it. But that's not what I want. What I want is a realistic reflection, so I want an image in the background. And what 3D programs like are HDRIs, they're high dynamic range images, so they've got a lot of information about light, and they morph all the way around the background of your object. I'll show you what I mean by adding one. So you press Shift A, and you go to Texture, because it's a type of texture, not image texture, but environment texture. Lots of people make that mistake. It's an environment texture, so I'll bring that in for now. And I'll show you a website where you can get lots of environment textures from. Here it is, HDRI Haven. Really fantastic site. They've also got lots of PBR textures as well. If I go and click on the HDRIs, we're probably going to be indoors for this because it's a chess set. So let's go indoor and choose one of these interesting looks. Perhaps we're playing chess in our front room. Let's click on that and I'll download the 2K version, which should be enough for us. But if you want real high detail, you can go even higher than that. So I'm back into Blender now. Now I need to click on Open and find that file. Remember, you can click on this little icon here to see the images. I've got a folder of HDRIs, and I'm going to click on the one I just got from HDR Haven. Make sure you link it up, and you'll see it in the background, and immediately you'll see the reflections change. To get back to our chess piece, we need to click on Object Mode. We're on World tab at the moment, so we'll go back to the object, and then we can change the roughness. Maybe we want it a bit more shiny, and that's looking great. Now, there's a lot more you can do to make this more realistic, but I think that's enough for this basic tutorial. One last thing though, it's nice to be able to render it without the background in. If you want to do that, you click on the camera icon and you go down to where it says Film and click Transparent. And there's our chess piece. Lastly, do remember to up your samples. I'll up them for the preview for now and I'll just click to my GPU because it will render faster. And there we go, our realistic looking chess piece. 
Okay, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thanks for watching and look out for more tutorials like this on gabbit.co.uk.